If we can get comfortable and a bit of quiet, please. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you for your attention. This is a traditional uh, opening night, uh, an award, and it's a very important award, the Matuska Award. And uh, as you'll see shortly and hear from, we're very privileged tonight to have one of the first 25 DFA founding members here tonight, Murray Matuska, who is not only a founding DFA member, but also the artist uh, behind this trophy that has become uh, a real, um, em to some extent emotional, but a very treasured award on an annual basis. I just briefly want to uh, give you a quick background and then I'll get the hell out of it. So the judges uh, uh, always include the previous year's winner, who last year was Hawke's Bay's Philip Irwin, myself representing the DFA, uh, Bob Swan, uh, a long, lifelong friend of Murray's and also a founding DFA member, and Murray himself. So the Matuska Award, uh, and I'll let Murray explain a little uh, further, but this has been the mantra that they developed this award for the unseen hero, the sort of person that it epitomizes what branch activity and commitment is all about. Every branch has one, and the challenge with this award is to get people to get nominated because the moment that some of these reluctant heroes hear about the fact that they may be up for the award, they immediately put in counterattacks to remove themselves from the nomination list. So this is a surprise attack, but it's no, uh, no less uh, more worthwhile. So we've got a heroic list of winners from 1996, and some of you all know these, these people well, and they epitomise the award. Dave Mackey from here, Cess Brown, Bob Dunn, Ken Buckingham, Harry Robinson, Brian Marcroft, Calvin Kimber, Brian and Ann Manor, Craig Wilson, most of those people you wouldn't ever see in public. They were behind the scenes just doing the work. Malcolm Gilbert in Canterbury, Bernie Split, Tom Loveridge, Brian Duggan in Southland, L.B. Cooper, Waikato, uh, Pip Rutland, Brian Freeman at uh, Lawrence and Pat Rowe in Central Regions that run their incredible burger stand and have done for years. Kevin Gilmore in Southland for his AHB work in recent times and last year the well-known Philip Irwin from Hawke's Bay. So in the judges' view, the recognition of these, these individuals don't ever see, seek the limelight or the leadership, but just live the passion and do it. The competition's main emphasis is to recognise the, the individual in his home environment rather than in this conference. And while this is important, there will be a function uh, in the home branch during the winter where friends and family and dear farmers can congregate. So there will be an event uh, later on this winter. So that's enough from me at this point. I'd like to introduce to you founding Murray Matuska uh, uh, Award um, and Murray and Barb put this thing together and we're privileged to have Murray with us tonight. Thanks, Murray. Yeah, well, thank you for those kind words, Tony. Uh, I'll square you up later, mate. Thank you. Uh, uh, but it's, it's lovely to be here. Barbara and I always love coming to the South Island because... When you cross that Cook Strait, it's just an amazing place, and uh, it's lovely to see Sir Tim here and uh, and, and, and all you, and such a such a big gathering. But uh, as I say, we love coming over here, and our grandsons. We have two grandsons that, that are mad on hunting, and they've been down here. I think they said the other night, Barb, they've been here uh, eight times since since they were 17 and 18. And I always remember it because. Um, Way back when one of them was 17, and it was a fair while ago, I just learned how to text. I just got the hang of this texting. And, uh, and, and the first text I ever got, and this is a true story, I got it from uh, Scott, who was one of our grandsons, and he said, uh, or granddad, he said, uh, this was the text, he said, we found this hooker, and she charged by the inch and we can't afford her. <laughs> but... <laughs> But, uh, uh, but she said, uh, uh, but he said, it may be a cheap one for you. <laughs> so these kids really, really do look after me. <laughs> uh, 
There was an article in the Herald not so long ago about the agonies of an after-dinner speaker. And uh, it's, it said that um, most, in a captive audience just like this, 10% of the, of the audience listened to the guest speaker. The, the remaining 90% had sexual fantasies. <laughs> That's what it said, and it, <laughs> and it said, it, and it also said, it, it also said that uh, it's amazing. And what am, what the hell am I doing up here? <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, it, it also said that uh, most people do listen to the opening line, and the best opening line I ever heard was a guy. He'd been going for about five minutes, and he said, uh, "You know the old cliche: Can everybody hear me?" And a guy about five rows back said, well, I can hear you, but I'll gladly change places with someone who couldn't. <laughs> and, and, the be, and the best closing line I ever heard was that Barbara's, uh, and she'll, 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 she'll give me hell tonight about telling it, but at Barbara's family reunion, the guy that was the MC, he was a cousin of hers, he was a shepherd on... Uh, uh, at National Park at Rauruma there, and he got up and he said, well, ladies and gentlemen, he said, oh, I've been at this all day. He said, and so I'm, I'm buggered. He said, I've had a hard day. He said, I've been organised all these guest speakers. He said, all I want to do now is go and have a beer with me brother and go home and rip Sue's knickers off. <laughs> and we thought, for, oh, for Christ's sake, and he said, uh, yeah, I should never agree to wear them in the first place. They're pinching <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> So all you guest speakers in the next couple of days, remember that. <laughs> it is a classic, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, I, uh, we have thousands of tourists. That's, uh, that's what we do. We have a lot of corporates at Katanui and, and Taupo there, and we have a lot of tourists. And because uh, I've heard all the one-liners and that sort of stuff, you know, and about uh, the zebras and everything. You know, we got zebras, and I said, you know, you know, people always say, oh, did you paint the lines? All that sort of stuff. I've heard all, I've heard all the jokes. But uh, we had a German group there not so long ago, and uh, he said, oh, I've got a good zebra joke. I thought, oh, here we go, there's another one. And he said, uh, there was a zebra on a, on, a, on a farm like yours, he said, and right next door there was a stud farm. And there was a colt running up and down the fence, and uh, so the zebra said to the colt, so... So what do you do here? And the cult said, well, you get those pyjamas off and I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about cults, <laughs> talking about cults, uh, I don't know whether you guys know, but they bring in these shuttle stallions from open America. And uh, they, uh, what they do, they... They used to serve four meals a day with them, but now they have a capsule. And Stuart Hutchings, he's a, he's a vet, he'll tell you about this. This is a true story. Uh, they give them this capsule, and they could do up to 30 meals a day. I don't know what it's called, but it tastes a bit like peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, there was, uh, as I say, we have all these corporate groups. And I tell them all, it's, it's, it's after uh, 44 years of deer farming, or 45, I forget what it is, um, I always say to people, if you want to know how my business is going, ask Barbara. Because I've been, I have had 44 years of talking it up. And it's very hard for me to start talking it down. But what I do say to these tourists is that uh, it's, been, it's been a hard year this year, but... It was worth, worse than 1987, wasn't it? That was the share market crash and everybody went, went broke. In fact, there, this is a true story too. In fact, next door to us, there was a young couple. He was a Kiwi guy married to a, a Chinese lady and, and it was a, they, they were a lovely couple. And they lost everything in the share market crash. And uh, co of course, there was a marriage breakup. He went, uh, she went back to Peking and he went back to Wanking. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that no, but that is a true story.
But, you know, um, I don't know how much time I've got do doing this tonight, but... <laughs> but there was a... Uh, with these corporates, you know, I've, I've heard all the stories. You can imagine I have. And um, we have, we have, as I say, we have thousands of them. And uh, I always remember one story. Well, well, Barbara and I have been married 54 years, I think it is, Barbara, isn't it? 56. <laughs> and Barbara has, has, has been an amazing wife. She really has. She... Uh, She's made thousands of cups of tea, and I always say that the secret of life is morning tea. Because, and Sir Tim will, will vouch for this, when you're having trouble with bureaucracy, like I had with all, keeping the, all the tar, she was the one that had the morning tea, and they came and sat down, and we talked it out, and sure enough, I got the permit to keep the only herd of tar on the North Island. So that's, Barbara's done a great job. But uh, um, it, it, the, the whole thing, the, just the whole business of this has been amazing and uh, I, I just couldn't have done it without her. Anyway, there was this, uh, as I say, we've been married for 56 years and there was this, a, a friends of ours, um, she, they, when they first got married, she said, now listen dear, she said, I want one thing. The, to the top drawer beside my bed is my drawer. Don't look in it. He said, no, no, I said I wouldn't do that. So anyway, after 30 years, she went away to, to, to visit her mum or something, and he was, he was, there was nothing on TV. So he thought, <laughs> so he thought, bugger it, I'll have a look in the top drawer. So he looked in the top drawer, and there was three eggs and 3,000 bucks. He thought, oh, that was strange. So when she came home, he said, dear, I've got a, I've got a confession. I looked in the top drawer. And she said, well, it had to happen. She said, uh, so what did you see? He said, well, what are the three eggs? And she said, well, every time I was unfaithful to you, I put an egg in the drawer. And he said, wow, Christ, he said, for, you know, 30 years, three times, no, look, he said, you've been a great wife, the house is always tidy, and it, oh, everything, no, it's great. He said... And you brought up the kids. No, look, he said, I'm not worrying about three times. And he said, what's the 3,000 bucks? And she said, every time I got a dozen, I sold them. <laughs> Can I go on or not? <laughs> But as I say, I've heard all the stories. I've heard some, I've heard some rippers. And uh, one I loved, and some of you may have heard it, was about a guy who drank a lot. And, and uh, his wife said to him, if you, if you come home drunk anymore, I'm going to leave you. So he went down the, down the pub and he got drunk, you see, and he threw up all over his jacket. And he said to his friend, I cannot go home. If I do, my wife will leave me. And uh, this guy said, tell you what, he said, go home. Tell her a man threw up, up all over you. Put a twenty dollar note in your top pocket and tell her that he gave it to you for the dry cleaning ticket. So he went home and uh, she said, "You've been." And I know he said, "I haven't been drinking." A man threw up all over me. He put a twenty dollar note in my top pocket for the dry cleaning bill. And she said, "Well, what's the other twenty dollars?" He said, "Oh, that's from another man who shat in my pants." <laughs> It wasn't very funny, but it was clean, wasn't it? <laughs> so I'm, I'm on a time limit here, so I, I better get off. But, but uh, the, the, uh, the Matuska Award uh, is something that Barbara and I thought of many years ago. And we had, uh, we had trouble kind of getting it through because uh, I have a problem, and Barbara will tell you, that everything... I expect everyone to be as enthusiastic about something as, as what I am, and, and life's not like that, is it? But anyway, so the, uh, we, 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 we wanted to call it the Grassroots Award. And uh, for some unknown reason, Tony Pierce got hold of it, 
and it ended up the McCluskey Award, but it wasn't supposed to be that, truly. I didn't want a big note on that, but uh, the, like the word Matuska, no one can pronounce it. He says Matuska, and, and other guys say it differently, uh, and it's got no panache, no class. Um, um, I, we did have a distant relation that uh, used to blow up trains in Germany. <laughs> so, so, so he must have been a ton of fun, Clive. <laughs> but, and the, other, the only other relation I, that I do have that I can claim credit to was uh, a great, great uncle of mine was killed at Custer's Last Stand. Well, he wasn't in the battle, but he was camped down the road and he went over to complain about the noise. <laughs> <laughs> so this could go, I could tell these one-liners all night, but I, I, better, I better give up. Uh, <laughs> they say the, uh, they say the uh, applause is the food of an entertainer, and, and you guys have certainly fed me well tonight. But, um, so, the, so anyway, the award is something that, uh, that I, I'm very very fond of and it's uh, something that I hope will continue forever and we have as Tony just said to you we, we always have trouble getting a, f a finalist and uh, all, all, you, you know, all the promos that come in you could, you could give them all the Matuska Award it, it, really is, it really is just like that, it's almost a toss of a coin but, uh, but this year we have an outstanding one, as well as they all are, but this guy really is. And uh, Before you spill the beans, do we, we want to put up the, some of the things that people have talked about, Murray? Oh, I'd love you to, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we are just, it's an inf informal invitation um, from, from branches, uh, and they go around their branches and they get citations, and s these are some of just the, just the highlights uh, for this particular winner. We don't um, let the, the uh, other nominees know that they've been in because we found in the past, again, they are not keen to go on. So there are, as Murray said, three outstanding contestants. So, so during his term as a branch chairman, he set up the branch two-year-old velvet competition, which, uh, which is still continuing. Also a fundraising scheme for the branch, buying and selling wiener deer, grazing them on members' farms. While branch meetings were not all that regular, they were always entertaining. Topics of importance were always dealt with and the branch concerns were always aired at chairman's meetings. Never shy to fa share farming experiences, good or bad. Strong sense of community and enjoyed immensely the company of other deer farmers attending events that he organised, inspired and drove. During his 13 years as chairman, the branch was in good hands. He was always willing to share his experiences, good, bad or indifferent. Known for his unorthodox approach to things, he was also known for sharing the odd mishap, often at his own expense, that occurred on his farm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hand Murray the trophy and ask him to announce the winner. The winner of the, 90, of the 2014 Matuska Award is Chris Peterson. Chris, we have to come up those dark stairs to the side, but just while he's coming up, since Murray started it, I'd just like to acknowledge that Waikato Branch's newsletter, I just read there, they have always a humour section, and I thought at my age as well that the story about the man watching television, one of those casualty intensive care programmes um, with some interest, and he said to his kids, for God's sake, if I'm ever lying on a bed, um, hooked up to a machine to keep me alive and being fed through, a, through fluids through a bottle, just pull the plug. So the little bastard's got up, threw his computer out the window and poured his wine down the sink. <laughs> Carry on. Hang on, Tony, I'm doing the jokes, aren't I? No, I... <laughs> you started it. Anyway, it's a shame that Chris's wife, Deborah, wasn't with us tonight, but... Uh, I'm told he didn't even know he was nominated, which is wonderful. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris Peterson.
I oh, know it's uh, didn't expect this, but um, now I was really uh, chuffed to be asked to be the uh, chairman of the old Fieldland branch because oh, I used to be such a shy person and never talk. And but shit, once I started being chairman, I could never stop. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we I still have mishaps. So I've just been uh, uh, at Pleasant Point now, and they have a leaky tap award. It's for the have, for having the most bulls up in the district in a for the year, and I won it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a bloody good chance I win it this year too. Because <laughs> 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 if it's going to happen to anybody, it always happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think um, I was real rapt to be chairman of the Fiordland branch, and um, you know, I used to um, do a bit of hunting and up this paddock hill was pretty high and I'd get, you know, the old, um, uh, there wasn't much air up there and that's when I come up with all these ideas <laughs> for the branch, <laughs> doing wieners and that and that worked really well and we got um, quite a bit of money which was pretty simple and um, for the branch for doing many things and, um, and now we've got uh, Jim Cameron over there and um, yeah he's gonna, he will carry on and Keep, keep the branch going because it's not a big branch, but we, you know, do pretty well. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. I think the second courses are on, or third, fourth.